All right, in this video, we're going to talk about ISO lines, what they mean, different types, and how to draw them. So what ISO lines are is they're basically lines that connect areas of the same qualities. So there's different, uh, different topics that we could use ISO lines for. Um, in this case, we're going to be talking about pressure and temperature in the context of drawing weather maps and reading them. Like if you see weather maps on the news, there's, you're usually going to see uh, ISO lines on them somewhere. So the prefix ISO means that things are the same or equal. And we have two different types when we're talking about weather of ISO lines that we could look at. And the first type is ISO bar, and this means the same pressure. So we're going to be drawing a line that connects areas that have the same pressure. Or isotherm, which means areas of the same temperature. So this we would be drawing a line to connect those different areas that have the same temperature. All right. So let's look at how to draw these lines. Basically, if you look at this map, we have a bunch of different temperatures listed on the map in different areas. And so with our ISO lines, what we want to do is connect areas that have the same temperature. And usually you're going to be given an interval that you should use to draw your ISO lines with. In this case, we've been given a 10 degree interval. We went from 10 degrees to 20 degrees to 30 degrees to 40 and so on. So we're looking for areas on the map first that have a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. So if we look on the map here, we can identify a few different areas that have 10 degrees Celsius as their temperature. Okay, so what we wanna do is try and connect all of these areas with a line. So we can start here, we have 10 degrees to another 10 degrees. And we could connect down here to this 10 degrees. Notice we could have just gone across here and connected to this 10 degree mark over here, but in that case, we would have been basically skipping or leaving out this 10 degrees down here, which we don't want to do or our line wouldn't really accurately reflect what we want it to show. So after we've connected down here to this 10 degree line, then we can come back up here to the other one and connect up here as well. Okay. So when we go to finish this line, we want to look and see, well, could we connect these together? Well, we don't want to just connect them together because we have this region of five degrees out here that we don't want to cut through here because we'd be going in between five and 10. We want to think of this essentially like a number line. If we have between five and 10, we can make a few tick marks here, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So would we cross in a number line between five and 10 if our line is representing the number 10? Well, that wouldn't really make sense because the number 10 would go here on that number line. So there are a couple rules that you wanna follow when you're drawing isolines. The first one is do not cross. So do not cross your isolines. So if you have, we're gonna have a bunch of different isolines here as you can tell from the directions at the top. So we don't want any of our ISO lines to cross over each other. And the second rule is do not touch. So we don't want our ISO lines to touch each other or to touch themselves unless we're connecting them in a loop. So instead of going through and connecting these two 10 degree marks directly, we can try and think of a way that might make more sense. So if we tried to connect up through here, we would see we'd be going in between these two numbers, 20 and five. So does the number 10 lie in between the numbers 20 and five? Well, it does. So we could put a little dot here in between those two numbers where 10 would sit on that number line. So if we imagine this is gonna be closer to five than it is to 20 because 10 is 10 units away from 20, whereas it's only five units away from the number five. So we want our dot where we're gonna cross through here to be a little closer to five than it is to 20. So we can connect through there. And now we can see we're gonna have another gateway here between this 20 and this five. So in order to draw our ISO line, we can safely go through here because 10 is again between those two numbers. So we can cut through there. So then we think, well, could we connect through here to our other 10? Well, if we look closely, we have five and five here, and 10 does not fit in between five and five. 
so we can't go cut through there yet. So what we could do is continue up through here. We have another gateway I'm running out of colors here, but between five and 20, okay? So we could connect our ISO line through here, maybe put a dot in between five and 20 and connect through there. And we've kind of run out of things to do with this end of the line. So we can go look at the other end and say, well, okay, we have 20 and five here. So we can safely go through there. And to finish this line off, we basically have two options. We could connect it into a loop. Or we could continue it off the map. And we'll see an example of that in a couple minutes. So our ISO line either needs to finish by closing itself in, into one loop, like we've done here. This is a closed loop meaning that it doesn't have any open ends. Or we can continue the line off the map and then just label it because we don't know what's going on up north in, in Canada here off the northern end of this map. So our next ISO line, now that we've done 10 degrees Celsius, would be 20 degrees Celsius. So to do this ISO line, and I'll erase some of these uh, other colors here. Okay, so our next ISO line at 20 degrees, we want to connect to all of our 20 degree values. So we can start putting dots on those, knowing that this is where our 20 degree ISO line is going to have to go through. All right, so we can start connecting these dots, making sure that we're only going through gateways where it's safe to go through. So if we connect these to 20 degree dots, there's nothing really in our way. We could say, okay, we have five degrees and 40 degrees here, so 20 does fit between those two numbers. Does 20 fit between 10 degrees and 50 degrees? It does. So we can come down here and connect towards this one, and then connect over to this one. <coughs> and we have to think, well, do we want to continue our line maybe over, over to the left, keep going left here? If we did that, we'd be going in between 40 and 50, that would not make sense because 20 does not fit between those two numbers. So we want to turn this down here and we can tell we already have a 20 degree mark down here that we probably want to try and connect to. So we can kind of turn down this way and we see we'd have to go between 10 and 40. So 20 does fit between those two, num those two numbers and it would be a little closer to 10 than it would be to 40. So we can go through there and we want to connect down to this 20 degree mark here and swing over to this 20 degree mark. Again, we're just basically connecting all the dots that have the same values. So we can come up to this 20 degree mark and then swing up to this one, going between 10 and 40. So that's a safe gateway to cross through. And we can swing over to this 20 degree mark and this one and that one. All right, so we've connected all of our 20 degree marks only going through areas that were safe to go through. So essentially, you saw us basically snaking this line kind of up through here, basically seeing if we can go through these little gateways that are made between two numbers. All right, so to finish this line off, the best thing to do would be to just continue it off the edge of the map and we can label it as the value that it has, in this case, 20 degrees. Alright, so we finished our 20 degree ISO line. We can then do our 30 degree ISO line. So this one's going to be a little tricky because we don't have many 30 degree values. The only 30 degree marks that we see on here are here and here. So we can connect these. And then we have to think, well, we have no other 30s on the map, but where could we continue our line? We want to just look at the different paths that we could take. So if we tried to go, let's say, straight down this way, we'd be going in between 40 and 50 here. 30 does not fit between those numbers, so we cannot go down in that direction. If we tried to go over to the left here, we'd be going in between 20 and 40. That would make a lot more sense. 30 does fit between these two numbers, so we can safely go over there. Here we have another gateway between 20 and 40. That works. Here we have another gateway between 20 and 40. That works as well. So you can see, basically, along this 20 degree ISO line, we can kind of use this as a guide. We have a bunch of 40 degree marks more to the outside, 
So our 30 degree line is gonna need to kind of snake in between the 20 degree and the 40 degree marks. So we can keep going here between 20 and 40. Here we have another part in between a 20 and a 40. So we can go through there. So here we have 20 and 60. We have to make sure that 30 still fits between those, which it does. So we can keep going down. 20 and 40 here. 30 fits between those. Keep going. Another 20 and 40. We snake 30 in between those. And here we have 20 and 40. Snake between those. And then to finish this, we want to kind of come around this other 20 degree ISO line. And here we have another gateway between 20 and 40, so we could fit through there. And here we have a gateway between our 20 degree line and 40, so we want to just keep snaking in between there. Again, between 20 and 40 here as well. Can we go between 20 and 50? We can. We want to stay a little closer to the 20 mark because 30 is closer to 20 than it is to 50. And we want to come up this way. So this is where we have to start being a little bit uh, thoughtful in our line drawing and saying, well, we know our 30 degree line is, is kind of hugging our 20 degree line here. We have a couple more gateways between 50 and 20. So again, we want to stay a little closer to the 20 between those two numbers. And same thing up here, we have 50 and 20. So we want to stay a little closer to 20 with that line, 20 degrees and 40 degrees. We can go about halfway between those, which would be this. 20 degrees and 40 degrees, again, halfway between those. We could end up finishing our line off the map like this. This one we could take up here. We don't, we don't really know. Maybe, maybe the 30 line would go more up vertically like this, but we can say if it keeps about the same slope, then we'd probably finish it like that. All right. So the next ISO line we have is 40 degrees Celsius. So we can work on that. We can put dots on all of our 40 degree numbers. So we can tell we want to connect some of these 40s together here, and we just have to make sure that we're following the gateways in order that would make sense based on a number line. So we have uh, a bunch of 40s in here, and some 40s in here. We come down here, this is our 30 degree ISO line, so we can use that as a guide. Actually, maybe I'll switch to a different color for, for 40 here. So we can use this as a guide and go in between 50 and our 30 degree line about halfway between. And then we have a gateway between 20 or our 30 degree line. You could use either one as a guide and go in between there. Here we have 30 degrees and 50 degrees. Go in between there and connect down to our other 40 degree mark here. So we can imagine we're probably gonna wanna connect this through staying relatively close to our 30 degree line connecting to this 40 mark here and up to this one here. Notice we went in between 20 and 60, so 40 fits about halfway between those, which is about where our line came out, so we're doing pretty good so far. We can connect up to this 40 degree mark here, this 40 degree mark here. Notice we went through 20 and 70 here, making sure that 40 fits there. You wanna always be double checking yourself to make sure that where you're going through, where you're kinda snaking your line through, squiggling it through, fits in between the numbers that, that you actually tried to go through. So here we have 30 and 50. We can go between those two numbers with 40 degrees. 30 and 50 again over here. We can go between those two numbers. And 30 and 50 up here, we can go between those two numbers as well. So we can take this off the map and label it as 40. So I'll take uh, green for our next ISO line since we're getting kind of a lot of them here. So the next one would be 50 degrees now that we've done 40, so we can put dots on all our 50 degree numbers. Okay, so this is another one where we don't have very many numbers to guide us here. We're gonna have to kind of use our other lines as a guide. So we know that our 250s should connect here. And then we don't have another number until way over here, but we do have this 40 degree ISO line as a guide. So we can kind of take our 50 and imagine that it's following somewhat of the same path. We don't know exactly how close to the 40 we should make it. Then we come up to a gateway here between 40 and 70. So we can 
put a dot here a little closer to the 40 because again, 50 would be closer to 40 than it is to 70. So we can come through there. We could go between 40 and 60 because 50 fits there. We go between 40 and 60 again. Here we have between 20 and 60, which obviously works. Or again, we could use our other ISO line as a guide between 40 and 60 works as well. So then we have to think, where do we come up here? Do we want to take it down here? Well, no, because 50 is our ISO line number right now. 50 would not fit between 60 and 70, so we don't want to go down there. We don't want to go over here because that's just a couple of 70s, but we see between 40 and 70 here, so we can go up there with our line. Again, staying a little closer to 40 than 70 because 50 would be closer there. Here we have between 40 and 70 in this gateway here. Here we have between 40 and 60. It's about halfway in between there. And now we're starting to make our way up to connect to these other 50 degree marks. So we'll go between 40 and 60 here as well. Connect to our 50, connect to our other 50, and we can finish our ISO line and label it as 50 degrees. Okay. So I'll go back to red here for our 60 degree line. So 60 degrees we have here, here, and here. We don't have any information on the left side of the map and we'd really be going off into the ocean here. Usually we're only tracking land temperatures. So our ISO line here, we can kind of just use the 50 as a guide and we're gonna start off the map here with our 60 degree line. And we can tell we're gonna connect in here from 60 to 60. We went between 50 and 70, which is fair game. So when we're finishing this line, we gotta be careful. We don't wanna go down in here into this all 70 territory, but we do wanna come through here in between our 50 line and 70 marked here. So we can go through there, making our way towards this other 60 degree mark. Kind of follow the contour of this other ISO line slightly as a guide. I come through here between 40 and 70, or again, using our other ISO line as a guide as well. And so to finish this, we could probably just go off the map like this and call it our 60 degree mark. All right, so our final ISO line here, been forgetting to cross these out, our final ISO line would be 70 degrees Celsius. So to finish this, we would mark all of our 70 degree territories. And these ones we could tell as we connect these gonna be able to form a little loop here. And this one is relatively simple because there's not really any other numbers left getting in the way. So we can just kind of connect through here, make sure we're connecting all of our 70s together. So this, we don't really know what's going on in the Gulf of Mexico. We could, we could connect this into a loop or we could finish it off the map. Really at, at this point, without, without the temperature information in the Gulf of Mexico, we don't know for sure. Maybe it's 80 degrees down there and our 70 degree um, ISO line should not connect. We, we don't really know. So whatever, whatever you do with that is fine. You can connect it if you think that it seems good to connect or you can leave it off the line if you don't want to extrapolate. All right, so I hope this was helpful in terms of uh, learning how to construct ISO lines. I tried to go slow with this video. Uh, I will come back with another video uh, with another example of ISO lines going a little bit faster paced and just so you can have a, another worked example. Uh, but please feel free to stop and go back to certain sections of the video if you're still struggling with these ISO lines. I know it can be a confusing concept. Uh, but thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.